Are you doing it like last time? Exactly like last time. Do you think it's too long? No. My friend Sue at school, you know, Sue Morley. Well, she's had her hair cut really short, and she's been growing it since she was six. And do you know what? She burst into tears when the hairdresser swept her hair into the dustbin. How did you know? I guessed. She felt as if she was saying goodbye to her childhood. Tragic. Shall I do yours now? If you like. Factory opens next week. Oh, no. Lucky you. Sue Morley's sister's going to be working there, too. Three pounds ten a week. Making shells and bombs. I wish I could leave school. Aren't you excited? I bet Dad let you keep at least a pound of that. You'll have to buy me a present. You'll get paid even more when you're 21. Mr. Carlson, our history teacher, says the war might go on for years and years. I might be able to work there too. There isn't a girl in town who isn't going to be working in that factory. I don't know what the boys are going to do if it blows up with you all inside. <laughs> I've got some news. It's a secret, though. Oh? I might be working for intelligence. A spy? Well, no, I'll just be someone in an office helping with files, that sort of thing. I'll be in London, at Senate House. I thought your dad wanted you to join the army. Uh, strictly speaking, I will be in the army. But they wanted people who are good at foreign languages, and I wouldn't be much used as a soldier. Now, that's why me digs. Somewhere in Bloomsbury, I expect. Perhaps I could do something like that. I'm quite good at French, and my German... Yes, you could, but I don't suppose I'd take girls. I suppose not. I might even have to sign the Official Secrets Act. Yes. Of course, I won't be much more than an office boy at first, a kind of secretary. I don't even know how to type. You could teach me. You know what? You could even teach me how to cook. I'll need to know if I'm going to live away from home. And I could teach you something about office procedure. Jolly good idea. And all about card index systems. Yes, that's it. And coach you a little in German. Oh. I know what you're thinking. Do you? I'm sure I'll be able to get away most weekends. We'll be together as much as it's possible in a war. Far more so now that I'm not going to be cannon fodder. And when we do see each other, we'll have an awful lot to talk about. You'll be able to tell me all about the intelligence system. Well, I suppose once I've signed the official... And secret... I'll be able to tell you all about working in a munitions factory. Yes. Are you being awfully sarcastic about everything? I thought you'd be delighted at my news. I'm quite bowled over for you. There you go again. What's the matter with you? Seriously, Cathy, what is the matter with you?
Huh? I don't want a scene, Dad. Where are you going, Kathy? I'm going up to bed. It's quarter past ten. The last bus should have got you in half an hour ago. We've been waiting, and I think we deserve an explanation. Did you miss the bus, dear? No. I felt like walking, so I walked. Walked? Yes, walked. Did you have your fare? Well, of course she had a fare. Yes, I did. I felt like walking, that's all. You walked all that way by yourself. It's only one mile, Mum, and I wanted to be by myself. You walked a mile in the dark? By yourself? You're getting the picture now. I wanted to walk, I wanted to be by myself, and I wanted to be in the dark. I walked by myself in the dark. Why? I don't want a scene. I'm sorry if you were worried, I really am. Now I'm going to bed. No, you are not, young lady. Not until I've heard what you were doing out alone in the dark. I was thinking. Thinking? What about? About myself and about the war. Hmm. Planning it all out, were you? That's right, Dad. Trying to plan it out for myself. Should be telephoning the Prime Minister in the morning to tell him what to do. I said I was trying to plan it out for myself. I expect she was thinking about starting work in the factory. Will you be doing any more thinking in the near future? I expect so. Perhaps next time you'll give your less intellectually gifted parents a little advanced warning. So they do not sit up worrying about you. I was half an hour late home. I've said sorry. I'll say it again. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Kathy! You know, anything could have happened to you out there. A young girl out alone in the dark. Anything could have happened. But it didn't. It never does. name? Leonard Rain. Occupation? Accountant. Mother's maiden name? I don't remember. Find out and come and tell me next week before you start work. Now, sign where I've marked the cross. You don't need to read it, you know. I want to know what I'm signing. Simply an acceptance of the conditions of your employment. There really isn't time. If there isn't time, then I won't sign. Very well, then take the paper, read it, sign it, and join the end of the queue. Next bill, please. Terribly good. You weren't even listening. So I was. It's coming on very well. Tell me what's in today's papers. Do you really want to know? Of course I really want to know. What sort of question is that? If you really want to know. The 51st Highland Division has been forced to surrender. 8,000 men have been taken prisoner. There will probably be more evacuations like Dunkirk, but on a smaller scale. 
And today the Germans are expected to enter Paris. Isn't this exciting? Exciting? Yes. It isn't a game, you know, Cathy. We've suffered a huge military defeat. And the Germans are probably about to invade us. I know that, Tony. I get the impression you're more interested in practicing the piano than in anything else. I mean, you've hardly spoken a word to me all afternoon. You don't seem to be taking the war very seriously, Cathy. Yes, I am. Ever since Dunkirk, I've been waking very early in the morning, like a seven-year-old on Christmas Day. For the first few minutes, I don't know why it is, I just know something very important is in the air. And then I remember the war. The Germans are about to invade us. We might have to fight for our lives. Everything is about to change forever. This morning, I woke up just before dawn. I couldn't get back to sleep. So I got dressed and I went out for a walk. It's funny, but I felt ecstatic. I kept stopping to touch things. A fence, a lamppost, a letterbox. And everything I put my hands on felt more real than ever before. And the sun came up. And everything I looked at was vivid and precise. Objects somehow looked like themselves, only more so. Does that make any sense? I walked to the park. When I got there, I burst out laughing at the tree. They looked so green, so ridiculously green. I felt very happy, but at the same time, very restless. I thought, I want to be doing something. I want to be in a room with charts and maps where decisions are made. I want to hold in my hand lists of how many tanks or lorries we've got or fly a plane or fire a gun. I want to learn something difficult. And then as the day wears on, my exhilaration wears off. Everything's much the same, really. People are talking about tea rationing and what you can earn at the munitions factory, not about fighting in the streets. Or what it might be like to live under the Nazis. What do you think, Dad? Human nature being what it is, I should imagine that life would not be so very different as some people would have us believe. Governments change, but people basically don't. The Germans would censor all the newspapers. Well, the government does that now. That's because of the war, Mr. Rain. Do you really believe the newspapers told the truth before the war? That's very naive, if I may say so. Anyone who spoke out against the Germans would be shot or put in prison. Only last month, the Home Secretary put several politicians in prison, without trial. But they were fascists, Mr. Rain. That's what the newspapers call them. But they were. I'm surprised at you both. Tony, you have a degree from the University College of Hull. And Cathy has a higher school certificate with three distinctions. Do you really believe a British government, even in peacetime, would allow a group to go free who genuinely threatened the perpetuation of the present system? If the people voted for that group, then the government would be replaced by them. My dear girl, the newspapers and the radio are there to make sure that people vote in the right way. If people started voting for the wrong things, they'd soon put an end to voting. You can take my word for that. So why don't we invite the Germans over here to run things for us? That's what you want, isn't it? You could put on your black shirt and go and wave to them from the front garden. If you don't want to discuss this sensibly, Cathy, you may as well leave the room. Heil Hitler. But the caretaker doesn't hear him, and he grabs him by the arm. And Anna, you're really the whole class. Do I just, you just shut up for a minute or two? Yeah. I've heard this story twenty times before. You liar! So the whole class starts to chant, "Caretaker, caretaker, caretaker," and old Gooseberry says, "Someone else told you." Each time you tell it, you change it. First of all, there were four or five of you chanting. Now it's the whole class. That's a filthy lie. Anna, it's just because she's in a bad mood. She's always in a bad mood. Ha! Huh. Will you two please stop bickering? Anna, do that fork again, please. Anyway, Anna, I wanted you to be quiet for a moment so that I could tell you something important. I don't care. Very well.
All right then, what is it? And it had better be important. I'm going to join the army. The army? <laughs> you? The Ats. I'm going to be a soldier. You wouldn't dare. She's joking, Mum. No, I'm not. I've been to the Labour Exchange. I'm going back next week for medicals. Cathy. You know very well that that's out of the question. No. Tell me why, Mum. You've had a good home and a decent education. Everything that we could afford you've had. Piano lessons, holidays in Germany. You're a... I know this isn't a fashionable word with people of your age, but you're a respectable girl, Cathy. What's that got to do with it? You know perfectly well what I'm talking about, don't you? Last week at the bus station, I was sitting across from three or four soldiers, nicely turned out boys. Two ATS came by and just smiled straight at those young boys, bold as anything. And when they'd gone, do you know what the soldiers called them? Scum of the earth. That's what they said. There goes the scum of the earth. I see. The ATS is not a place for respectable young girls. I cannot believe it. What? I cannot believe that you seriously want to do a thing like this, Cathy. Can't you? I suppose you realize this is more or less the end for us. Quite apart from the kind of company you're going to be keeping and, and the sort of temptations that are going to be put in your way. What do you mean by that? You know what everybody says about the ads. Oh, yes. Oh. And what about your parents? Have you considered their feelings? That's precisely the attitude of your average Tommy. Fast and loose. Apart from all that, the chances of us getting leave at the same time are pretty slim. And who knows where you'll be posted? No, I don't suppose we'll be seeing much of one another for a bit. Then, as you keep saying yourself, this isn't a time to be thinking of ourselves, is it? But you don't have to go to the other extreme and be so totally selfish. You had important war work to go to. Important war work? Of course it's important. More important than the ads. You can't fight a war without munitions. Your pay would have been very good. Together we could have put something away and we could have gone on seeing each other. Now that's all finished. Would you do it? What? Work in a munitions factory till the war is over. They're not taking on unskilled men and Never anyway. mind that. What if they were? You're so anxious to go on seeing me. Why don't you stay here while I join the army? I'm sure I'd be able to get away most weekends. We'd see one another as much as is possible during the war. We've been perfectly ridiculous. And when we did see each other, we'd have so much to talk about. Why do you think your war is so much more important than mine? For goodness sake, Cathy. You're talking as if I've been given the chance to run the war. I'm going to be little more than an office boy. Most of us are going to have to do boring jobs. There's no way around it. You seem to take it as a personal insult that nobody's offered you your control centre, your room with maps and your list of lorries. Who do you think you are? What's so special about you? so hard about everything. 
should see your face when you're talking. You look so, well, mean, Cathy. The ATS is full of women like that. I've seen them in town. Rowdy. Awfully aggressive, in fact. Not like women at all. Those dreadful uniforms. There's something horrible about seeing a lot of women in uniform. Something sinister. They're not like women at all. They're more like... Like... Men? No. Like ants. They're just like ants. I thought I'd come up to say goodbye. My train leaves at nine. There's four of us travelling together to the camp. They gave us rail warrants when we went for the medicals. Expect it'll take hours to get there. You know what the trains are like now. So... I'll write as soon as I... expect it to be quite strange at first, all those people. So, goodbye, Dad. Goodbye. Dad. Many of you have expressed doubts about women soldiers, and all of you will shortly have women under your command. It is almost certain that the government will be granting the ATS equal military rights with men in the army. The woman soldier is to be a fact of life to which you must adapt yourselves, and these few notes should be of some use to you. Working conditions it should be realized that women are not good at standing. The fatigue engendered by standing has a bad effect upon their capacity to take in instructions and will induce inattention, fidgeting, boredom. All instruction classes should be planned to alternate standing and seated classes and where possible women waiting their turn should not just be stood at ease but allowed to sit down. Esprit de corps and handling. In order to build up esprit de corps among women who are normally lacking in community consciousness, enthusiasm must be built up and inspiration supplied. There is very little glamour in modern army life and less colour. Women need a thrill to produce enthusiasm, which is the first step towards esprit de corps. This can be given in many ways. The tradition of the army, of the regiment, well told. They must be made to feel they belong by taking part in parades as well as training. It is imperative that the women should feel they are being taken into the confidence of their commanding officer. That he trusts them, relies on them. To make them believe this, he must actually do so. Many commanding officers will have their misgivings, but the women must not know this. Women will always reciprocate once their trust is given. 
It is a natural instinct with them to live up to what someone whom they like and respect thinks of them. In connection with defaulters, a word or two about tears. Tears are natural to some women and are frequently perfectly genuine. Take no notice, but if it continues, a brisk word or two of a bracing nature usually stops them. There is another type which becomes deeply depressed and may turn hysterical. Send these out of the room and put a woman NCO in charge. When they have recovered, have them back and begin again. Open your lockers and stand to attention by your beds. Another sound out of you, and I'll have you standing here till breakfast. I've never seen anything like it in my life. This place is a pigsty, a bloody shambles. Bloody shambles. It's, it's a pigsty. I've never seen anything. You're not you. built up on respect, faith, and love of the cause or of the show. Once given, their trust is hard to shake. It will pull them through most hardships because they will never wish to let down the person to whom they owe that faith and that trust. Thank you for your attention, gentlemen. Now I will hand you back to Colonel Cooper. Scott! Scott!
hours to study the notice board and choose your task in life. Watch out for the times of the aptitude tests and don't choose anything your mother wouldn't like. Scout! Scout! Fall! Out! <laughs> Why don't you choose something we can both do? That way we can stick together. Like a cook. Well, that's it. Something easy like that. I could have stayed at home and cooked every night for my dad. A driver, then. Boring. Driving other people around who are doing all the interesting jobs. All through basic training, we said we'd stick together, Kat. So? You'll have to be a special operator, too. <laughs> Must be joking. Catch me being special. As much as I can do to keep ordinary. Well, I need to be special. So you. It's probably only pastry cooking an officer's mess anyway. <laughs> can you play? Well.
I see why they call it the graveyard shift. On the 3rd December, between 23.59 hours and 0800 hours, messages were interrupted by your, intercepted by your station that were of inestimable value to high command. Keep up the good work. Here, yeah, that was yours, Cathy, the graveyard shift. Might even have been you what wrote it down. Inestimable value. I wonder what that could be about. You know, they should tell us more about what we're doing. I mean, copying down those letters eight hours a day. But don't start on that again. You'll get a bad name for yourself. I'd just like to know, that's all. Make the job less frustrating. I mean, between 23.59 and 0800 hours, they could tell us more than that if they wanted to. They treat us like little girls. Those big boys. It must get jolly cold riding this thing in this weather. What? I said it must get very cold. Bloody freezing. I hear you go off towards the end of our shift, first thing in the morning. I always listen to the sound of your bike. Then I know we don't have long to go. Huh. Do you have to go very far? BP and back. About 120 mile. BP? Bletchley Park. Of course. Bletchley's the centre of it all, isn't it? What's it like there? Do you know what they've got there? No. Girls. Thousands and thousands of girls. There's never been so many girls in one place before. After the war, no one would believe it. No men? Well, officers and blokes from Cambridge University in civvies, like. They must be in great demand. <laughs> Not them. Haven't you heard about them? No, I haven't. Half of them are, you know? We'll bump into one another again. Yep. For a chat. Mm-hmm. Must be boring for you with all your thousands of girls.
<laughs> he's got muscles when no one else is meant to work. <laughs> How do you know? I met him at the seaside last summer, didn't I? Oh, yes, of course. No, listen. <laughs> he's old, can't even hang <laughs> He's out. <He's ill. laughs> King Kong. <laughs> Corporal Kong. <laughs> Only once, honest. Seven months ago, and we didn't kiss. We held hands in the bus station, but we never said nothing. He made a big impression. Because his regiment's going abroad. That's the only reason he wrote to me. I expect he wants to marry someone before he goes. I'm not being mean, am I? Of course not. You shouldn't feel guilty about it, either. It's just the trouble. You say no to them, they get frightfully upset and make you feel it's all your fault. Or... You're nice to them from the start, and they think you're loose and disgusting. Yeah, that's exactly my way of thinking, Kat. What they want is for you to say no for a bit, and then say oh, yes. yes, so they think they've won you over. They want you to be just how they imagine you. They're the delicate flowers, really. <laughs> talking about this here or anywhere. I know that, but if I don't talk to you, just you, once, I think I'll go mad. Look, we already know there are two other interception stations from the other girls who've been posted there. There might be dozens of stations, all sending messages back to Bletchley by teleprint and motorbike. If the codes are being broken, that means we know everything the Germans are thinking. Everything the Germans are going to do. We ought to change the subject. They can't hear us. It's so frustrating doing a job and not knowing what it's for. Sometimes I think it's complete nonsense. Like polishing our boots every evening. Oh, look, you've Some got it all out of proportion, Cass. All of the women know nothing. Some of the men know everything. Yes, well, I'm quite happy knowing nothing, thank you very much. They probably think women can't keep secret. I think he's coming over to us. What? Perhaps you young ladies are waiting for someone you know. I don't know. I thought you weren't. Waiting for someone to buy you a drink then, are you? No, I was just talking. <laughs> Talking. We haven't been buying drinks. It's my turn. I'll get them. I'm not serving you. Not serving us? Why? We won't do nothing while we can. I'm sorry. You'll have to go. Why? How do you get? I've got my other customers to think of. Come on. This isn't the kind of place you think it is. We're not going. Oh, yes, you are, young lady. This is a respectable pub. Not a place you can hang around and wait to be picked up. Don't you dare touch me! Come on, Do as your friend says. Out, or I'll call the military police. Get off me! Get off me! Calm, keep calm! Oh! oh.
You were asked to leave a public house and you refused to go. You attacked the publican, causing him grievous bodily harm. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Intolerable. I've had some violent, drunken, crude men under my command who've got drunk on Saturday nights and got themselves thrown out of pubs, but never, never have I had a soldier attacking a publican. The publican, Ray. Are you attempting to get yourself discharged from the army? No, sir. Assaulting a publican. Do you know, I, I don't know, I wouldn't rate that more serious than rape. Wouldn't you? Well, wouldn't you? Yes, sir. What was that? Yes, sir. Have you anything to say about this? No, sir. No, good, because I don't particularly want to hear it. Your work is satisfactory. And so is your turnout. But your attitude, your supervisor isn't happy with your attitude to your work. Perhaps the pressure is too great for you. Anyway, I could court martial you for this reign, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'm getting rid of you. You'll be confined to barracks for a month on general duties, and by that time, your posting to Bletchley should be through. Sir? Yes, general duties at Bletchley. This goes down on your record, Rain. It's a black mark against you. And one more wrong move out of you, and you'll be in very serious trouble. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Now get out of my sight. Anyway, you can't push me around. <laughs> of course, what people refuse to understand is that underground stations are death traps. You told us a good deal about London, Tony, but you said precious little about what you're doing there. Well, I've been jolly lucky, actually. I've been attached to the Ministry of Air Production and fast streamed. Well done. Does that mean you've been promoted? I've been helping to write posters. Let's hear one of yours, then. I might have seen it. Oh, I'm not sure I can remember oh, one. Come on, Tony. Well, there is one. It's from a series called Radio Bulletin. It goes, A bomber over Norway. A, a bomber over Norway. Gaping hole in the floor. Pilot's cabin roof gone. Tried desperately to get home. All the maps have blown away. The radio was damaged and very shaky, but the operator sent out faint SOS signals for 90 minutes. Only one was heard. It was enough. Hobbling home, propellers bent, one useless engine. No charts, pilot half frozen. They made landfall at the Shetlands and found lights and welcome. Their success, their confidence, their safety, they all depend on you. Very good, isn't it? Mm. I don't think I've seen that one. Mm. I didn't write it myself. I helped to write it. And what about you, Cathy? How exactly are you helping to defeat the wicked Germans? <laughs> what does that badge mean? I mean, some wireless operator. I mean, signals. Or at least... That's interesting. Have they taught you to do Morse code? <laughs> I'm not allowed to say. Not allowed? That's a good one. I've signed the Official Secrets Act. I can't tell you what I do, or what I've been doing, without breaking the law. <laughs> she's been back here a couple of hours, and she's already at her airs and graces. You're that important, are you, already, Private Rain? 
that they've given you secret work to do? That's right, Dad. Most secret. And you can't tell us civilians in case we tell the Germans? Exactly, Dad. You've been away for several months now. Your mother's missed you terribly. Oh, well, I wouldn't say that. No, it's true. She's missed you terribly. I think we deserve at least a brief explanation about what you've been up to. I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to say. Well, wonderful when we haven't seen you for so long to have so much to talk about. We'll have tea in the other room, Mother, when you're ready. Oh, dear. He's been so looking forward to you coming home. Is there really nothing you can tell us about yourself, Cathy? W150050 Auxiliary Rain, C. Let's get a few things straight. First, understand, as many people don't seem to, that the Wrens, the WAFs, and the ATS haven't been built up for fun, or to ensure that young women are as inconvenienced as much as young men, or as a substitute for hockey clubs, but because we are desperately short of manpower. In modern warfare, an enormous non-combatant force is needed to maintain men in the front line. In the British Army, for example, as in the German Army, one-third of the men spend all their time supplying, repairing, and administering the other two-thirds. Now, a lot of this administrative work can't be done by women, but an awful lot can. In the days of the women's suffrage campaign, a favourite argument of the opponents of the enfranchisement of women was that women should not be allowed to vote because they were incapable of defending their country. Uh, nothing would have surprised these people more than the competent, good-hearted way their granddaughters have proved them wrong. One of the most useful spheres for women in the services is cooking. As the war progresses, the number of meals they cook each day for His Majesty's armed forces has risen to millions. Even more... I say, what's going on? I was listening to that. Sorry, sir. Thought it might have been getting on your nerves. And the Prime Minister himself, Mr. Winston Churchill, having been blessed with three daughters, has been able to contribute one to each of the services. Henceforward, as our colossal war machine gets underway, no skilled person is to do what can be done by an unskilled person. And no man is to do what can be done by a woman. Why should we claim a monopoly? The brain is only a physical entity. <coughs> there are, of course, the theological objections, you know. Theological I mean, if you were to tell a clergyman you had a machine over in the other hut that could think, well, I'm quite sure he'd take a pretty dim uh, view. Theological arguments are not very impressive as far as I'm concerned. In Galileo's day, the Ah, oh, Galileo. Matthews, why don't you keep your mouth shut? I'm sorry, tender old friend. Waiting for coffee makes me hysterical. Carry on. Carry on. Galileo said, Joshua 10, 13. Where's that coffee? And the sun stood still and hasted not to go down about the whole day. Psalm 105, he laid the foundations of the earth that it should not move at any time, were considered an adequate refutation of the Copernican theory. He knows his Bible. With what we know now, such an argument appears futile. At the time, however, it made a quite different impression. Very well. But the burden of proof is really yours to show us that a machine is capable of thinking. Exactly. The trouble is, one tends to get bogged down in definitions of machine and think. A better way would be to think of a problem in the terms of a game, which I've called the imitation game. Can we play it? Well, almost. There are three players, a man, a woman, and an interrogator who can be of either sex. Now, the interrogator stays in a room apart from the other two, but connected by a teleprinter. Now, his aim is to find out which of the two is a man and which is a woman. The man's objective is to try and cause the interrogator to make the wrong identification, while the woman's purpose is to try and help the interrogator. 
probably the best strategy for the woman is to answer truthfully. And she can add things like, um, don't listen to him, I'm the woman, but there's not much point because the man can make the same kind of remarks. Now, the question is this. What will happen when a machine takes a part of the man in the game? Will the interrogator decide wrongly as often when the game is played like this as it does when the game is played with a man and a woman? Wait a minute, Turner. What is it? Shouldn't you first establish whether the woman can think? It's not something one can take for granted, you know. <laughs> Very amusing. <laughs> Perhaps Matthews, the subject, would interest you more if the imitation game were played with little boys. Yes, indeed, Turner, and I'm sure we could count on you to arrange it. How will this new form of the problem make it easier? Did I hear something? your new menu. Congratulations. Good. Well done, Tony. Are you sure? Oh, yes. I think you'll find the music inside the piano stool. But do go on, it's one of my favorite pieces. I don't think other ranks are supposed to play it. Mozart's only for officers. I meant this piano. Do you like your work? Why don't you answer? I don't like being patronized. I see. So you think this work is beneath you? I didn't say that. Everyone has to do their bit. Quite. Right. As long as you do it well. Look, if you're transferred next week from breaking codes to washing dishes, then I'll come and listen to what you have to say about doing your bit well. Don't get angry. How did you know what I do? I guessed. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd better get on with my bit. I say. What? John Turner, King's College, Cambridge. Auxiliary rain, Frinton. Oh, come on. Stop being so tragic for one minute. Kathy Rain. May I call you Kathy?
What the bloody hell are you doing in here? Sorry. Delivering a typewriter, sir, as requested. Typewriter? Didn't you see the notice on the door? I'm not... And you thought you'd like to come in and take a good look round? I thought... You don't I... think... When there's nobody here, you go away and wait until there is. Do you understand? No unauthorized personnel. Yes, sir. What's your name? Rain, sir. Right. Now get out of here, Rain. And take this bloody typewriter with you. But it's a... Get out, you understand? Out! 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 Hard at it, then. Yes. Clean cups and saucers might set the Germans back, don't you think? Uh, shall I give you a hand? Uh, together, we could really surprise the enemy. No, I don't want you to. You know, I think you're a rather difficult person. You think the kitchen skivvy should be an easy person? And you deliberately misunderstand me. Why are you so prickly? Why are you so interested? I like difficult, prickly people. They're awfully intriguing. Like difficult curves. There you go again. I was always told that a lady should never stoop to sarcasm. Well, I'm only an auxiliary. As you keep pointing out. I don't mind at all being an auxiliary. I mind doing stupid jobs like this when there's a war on and I could be doing something useful. Why not apply to be trained in something? I was. A special operator. At one of the interception stations? Yes. They moved me on. What did you do wrong? I assaulted a publican. <laughs> I say. Was the beer flat? <laughs> it's a terrible thing to do. I shouldn't laugh at it. So this is your punishment? Bottle washer? Simple, repetitive jobs, backing up the men. But at least you're safe, Cathy. The idea of women at the front lines or up in aeroplanes shooting each other's pretty legs off is appalling, don't you think? Yellow's up, John. Look, I mustache, yellow's up. Yellow? You will come and have tea with me in my rooms on the next afternoon off, won't you? Well, oh, I'm... come on, don't be a stuffed shirt. I'm not an officer. Anyway, it's Lapsang Souchon, courtesy of King's College, Cambridge. You can't refuse, can you? Would you like to pour? No. Oh, I, I thought you might like to be mother. I'd rather wait till the war was over. Oh. <laughs> uh. Uh. Stops in this cup. Yes, I expect I work too hard. But we're not allowed to talk about that. Um. Uh, tell me about your family. I, I suspect you're an only child. No, I've got a younger sister. 
Why should you think that? You're rather solitary, and you're quick to defend yourself. And I was an only child. I hope we might have something in common there. I was brought up by my mother. My father was a district commissioner in Ceylon, uh, but my mother couldn't stick it, so she came home to England to have me. <laughs> She's a very forceful lady, quite frightening, really, and very gifted. What at? Well, um... <laughs> she's rather good at organising people, particularly me. And uh, she's rather good at the harpsichord as well. She sits on a horse well, as they used to say, and she's something of a dab hand with a burned arrow. In fact, she's won trophies at tournaments, that sort of thing. She does sound rather frightening. Aren't you scared of her? I was a bit, I suppose, but... Being here has rather put me beyond her reach. Do you know, if, if she came in here now and found me drinking tea with a private from the Axe, she'd be outraged. Outraged beyond belief. <laughs> She's a bit of a snob, you know. Would you tell her to mind her own business? Yes. Well, I'd, I'd have to be tactful, of course. Now, what about your family? You've escaped Frinton, your father, your fiancé, and you're still browned off. Yes, I am. A lot of people say the uh, ATS uniform is rather drab, but I think it looks marvellous on you. That's a consolation. You look stunning in your grey flannels. <laughs> you know, I... I get the feeling when I'm talking to you that you're very angry about something. Let's talk about the war. You're probably the best person to ask. Do you think the Germans still have plans to invade us? Or do you think they've gone east for good? Are you angry? Not with you. So answer my question. On one condition? Yes? That you let me hold your hand. The Germans have elaborate plans for the invasion of Great Britain. But they're so heavily committed in the East that they're in no position to implement them. That's exactly what the papers say. Then for once you can believe what you read. Now, tell me about your fiancé. Tell me about the Americans. Do you think they'll come in? Who knows? But if they don't, it might be very difficult to bring the war to any kind of conclusion in the next ten years. I heard someone say that on the wireless. So did I. What about the French resistance movement? Is it true that the government doesn't really take them very seriously? Cathy, you are extraordinarily beautiful. Is it mine? Kathy. You. We. Yes. Yes. 
Oh. oh, put on the fire. It's all right. It'll get warmer. Are my hands cold? Yes. <sighs> Sorry. It's all right. Good. Are you? This is your first? Yes. It's my first time. You, you don't mind me asking? No, not at all. What about you? What, me? Well, it's not... Um, it isn't really. going. Please don't be upset. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. My God, you've got a nerve. No doubt you'll be telling all your friends. I don't understand. I'm sure you don't. Do you know what you are? You're a... Do you know what you are? Your first time. You must really be enjoying this. It's working out exactly as you planned it. No. No. You wanted to humiliate me. And you've succeeded. You hated your own job and you were jealous of me for mine. So you thought we'd even up the score a bit. No. You know all the secrets. You vindictive little bitch. I don't understand. I don't understand what you're talking about.
Madonna. I'm sorry. What are you doing in here? What are you doing with these? Who said you could read these? Don't move. Do you hear me? Don't move. Corporal! Corporal! Yes, you! And that other man! Come here quickly! Quickly, man! Now, you two are going to stand guard over her till I return. Do you understand? She's not to move, and you're not to take your eyes off her. Is that clear? My God! One five zero oh, five zero auxiliary rain C. Sit down, Kathy. This business has gone on too long. It's time you brought it to a conclusion. Kathy, you know more about Altra than any woman alive. You've worked in an interception station. You know that side of it. And you've had access to two secret files here and heaven knows what else. In your own statement, you said that you'd read about the German Enigma machines. That you've understood how important our code-breaking operation is to the conduct of the war. You also seem to have read something of the command structure of Ultra. At the same time, I have a report from a senior intelligence officer. She found you snooping in his room. And I have Turner's report that you tried to use your charms to wheedle information out of him. We found a scrap of paper in the waste paper basket near your bed the word Station X written on it in your handwriting. You said it was a letter to a friend which you'd torn up, and I'm even prepared to believe you. We discover that you spent your holidays in, in Germany before the war, that you speak reasonable German, and that your father was a paid-up member of the British Union of Fascists until 1937. Kathy, we are quite satisfied that you're not a spy, but how can we possibly set you free? We can't. Ultra is too important. We're prepared to shoot innocent people to protect the ultra secret, let alone lock them up. So, since you know what's at stake, I know you'll understand. Turner asked me to give you this. He's in hot water for having those files in his room, but then he's indispensable. He thought it was terrible. The idea of women shooting at each other. Shooting their pretty little legs off. It is terrifying. It terrifies me. Because I'd hate to lose my legs. But it terrifies men for different reasons. It you know, on the anti-aircraft units, the ATS girls are never allowed to fire the guns. Their job is to operate the range finder. If, if the girls fired the guns as well as the boys, if, if, if girls fired guns and women generals planned the battles, then the men would find there was no morality to war, that been, there'd been no one to fight for, nowhere to leave their consciences. The war would appear to them as savage and as pointless as it really is. The men want the women to stay out of the fighting. 
so they can give it meaning. As long as we remain on the outside and give our support and don't kill, the women make the war just possible. Something the men can feel tough about. But I'm withdrawing my support. Well, it hardly matters, because we're going to keep you locked up. Do you know what fascism is, Kathy? Do you want to see us overrun by the Germans? Take your hands off me! Did I say I wanted this to be overrun by Germans? Is that what you think I've been saying? <laughs> when we went to bed, it didn't matter that he couldn't. I didn't care, I really didn't care. I liked him. He didn't have to be brilliant and clever at everything. I, I liked him more. But he couldn't bear to appear weak before me. He just couldn't stand it. Don't you see, that's the same thing. I mean, as the war. Don't you see, the two... The two... You're a very, very silly girl. 